kidding. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are good. And we forget that sometimes, especially when we walk through our own heaviness. Circumstances can blindside us from remembering who you are, who you are in us, and who we are in you. So today, be our reminder. Be the one who awakens us from our slumber. Be the one who sheds light into our darkness. One who gives us understanding when we're confused. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for Ralph. I pray that you uh, restore him and his healing. Uh, I pray for Tim Campbell and the stuff he's walking through with his own cancer stuff, uh, with the surgery things. God, guide him. Give the doctors really good wisdom as he walks through a number of steps. Thank you for what you've already done in his life. For others in the church family, Father, um, touch their bodies that need healing. Touch the emotions that need healing. Restore relationships that need restoring. For you are the great restorer. Thank you, Father. Amen. This morning, I want to take a look at what's next. What's next in our walk? For 10 years now at Hope Fellowship, I've shared an awful lot with you about who God is and who you are, who you are in Christ, who Christ is in you, and touched on a lot of theology, which is critical, and I will keep doing that because that's the foundation from where we grow. But what's it look like? It's nice to continually hear how much God loves us. I love it. It makes us feel good. It's a good reminder. But we have been called to grow up. We've been called to apply the truth that God reveals in us. So what's it look like? The answer is this. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like for you. Because all of us are on a different path in our theology, in our life circumstances, in our stages of life. Um, those that are older than me, <clears throat> um, they have wisdom. They've walked through stuff. They have not arrived anywhere, clearly. There's no arrival. But they've seen patterns of human nature, humanity, our society. Listen to the voices of those older than you. Seek out the advice. I've always, always sought out a mentor or two or three. Sometimes a mentor in one category of work and another and for another field. But I've been blessed with good mentors and it was imposed on me at the very beginning, especially when I first became a pastor. St. Harvey was the first one. Harvey Stickley, who's gone home to be with the Lord. Amazing man. Taught me to relax and be real. He'd been through a lot in his life. He'd been through a lot of religious churches. And yet, he didn't seem all that religious when he got to me. Maybe the stuff peeled off on the way. <laughs> I don't know. But God used him to speak into, <coughs> into my life. Along the way, I've had other people. I had a guy named Greg Funk who forced me to rethink church. And I often think back to him. He's in the States right now. Um... But he taught Lori and I about how not to do church <laughs> and rethink it. We met, we met in a uh, theater in Barrie, in a, in a movie-style theater uh, on the campus of Georgian College. And he made me walk around. In fact, one of the first things he did, he took me to the, the mall, the Bayfield Mall, and there were these displays up, these picture frames. They didn't look like anything. I said, that's pretty weird art, you know, and was ready to walk past. He said, no, 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 you stop. I want to show you something here. So he made me look at this picture. Squiggly lines and patterns. Big deal. Okay. Art. Obviously, I'm not an artsy. <laughs> you know? He says, no, 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 I want you to look at this. Focus on this. Got it. Next, can we get the shake that we we're going to get? <laughs> he says, no. 
I want to teach you something really important. I want you to focus on this picture until you see something you don't see right now. <sighs> Fine. I, I don't do slow very well, so it was really hard to, to stop. So I'm looking at this picture. There's a whole bunch of different ones around uh, in the center of the shopping mall. And after a few minutes, I saw something jump out. A 3D image. You'll never see it first glance. Drive, walking past, life's too fast. You'll never see the real image that was there. And suddenly, by staring into this picture, by slowing down and focusing, looking beyond what I saw and look deep into the picture, out it came. Anybody see those pictures before? Yeah. Some people never see in. <laughs> But he taught me. And he said, this is a person. People show you certain colors. But that's not always the real picture of who they are. And he wasn't trying to teach me identity in Christ. He was trying to show me people. We have these skin suits on. And we can dress them up and we can even paint a smile on her face. And, or you can frown, you have all sorts of emotions. We can have a whole message on that. But what's going on at your core? Just because somebody's super mad at you for a moment, you may not have anything to do with it. It's they who have something going on, not you. That's really hard to remember in the heat of the moment. And then I had more mentors, more teachers that spoke into my life. Then I learned my identity in Christ. Found out who I was. That, I've, I'm still learning. I thought I'd arrived. <laughs> I was wrong. I continue to grow. But the knowledge that God has given me has to go somewhere. It has to show itself. It has to be used somehow. And it doesn't have to be in the big grandiose way. In fact, what I was originally going to teach this morning, I had to chuck it stinks because I worked on it last night. <laughs> Why do you do this? <laughs> and it was going to be about living your dreams. Because I know some of us feel like I've, I'm not accomplishing anything in life. And what I was going to talk about was, okay, God has potential for you. And he has a plan for you, which he does. And I started to hear what I was walking through. And this morning, God showed me, that is so self-centered, what you were ready to teach. You need to go back and rethink that whole thing from a non-self perspective. I don't know about you, but there are days where I can feel purposeless. I can hit depression very fast. I don't stay there long. Part of my personality, remember? I don't do slow. <laughs> Depression, move on! <laughs> you know? I have that t-shirt. It says ADHD, you know the ACDC one? Uh, highway to, hey, look, there's a squirrel. <laughs> Lori hates it. <laughs> what was I saying now? <laughs> oh, no. Squirrel. <laughs> I can get into depression. My mind can get going and I can, I can uh, zoom into a place I shouldn't be in my mind and worry about things that will never happen. I can be consumed with a lie for a long time. Most of us are amazing fantasy thinkers. We fantasize over things that will never happen. And we're good at it. And then we spin from that emotion into a downward spiral. But you and I have been given not just a purpose, a person in us. The whole idea of trying to find your dream in life, there's value to it. Don't get me wrong. But that, I don't believe, is what God is calling you and I to, is finding your dream. 
Because if you stick in just that compartment, there's tons of YouTube videos out there. You can watch on, you know, positive thinking, and Nancy talked about that last week, you know. Um, you, can, you can find all the stuff that'll help you find your dream. How about take one step back and, until we talk about dreams? Dreams are important, but if that's where you start, you're in trouble. You don't start at the dream. You start at who is in you. And we start with knowing what he has said about you, believing what he has said about you, and here it is, learning to hear his voice. When you learn to hear his voice, then you can listen to the dream he puts in you. And his dream may not be singular. It may not be one PowerPoint slide. It may be a direction. It may be a path that along the way there are markers and you may be in a boring stage of life right now. <laughs> You're stuck having to do the mundane. But I promise you, in the mundane, there's a dream for you that God does have. And it is to call your attention to him, taking your chin that's only seeing the steps in front of you, raising them up to look at him. Paul knew this. And he wrote about it. I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. He's calling us to grow up. He's calling us to listen to his voice and to encourage one another. How do we grow up? I'm going to tell you, it's right here. It's out there with people. It's never on your own. Paul writes, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for Christians everywhere, I have never stopped thanking God for you. Stop there. I don't even like some Christians. <laughs> Let alone have to love them. <laughs> That's hard. There are non-Christians, non-believers I like a heck of a lot more. Why? Well, some religious people who call themselves Christians are one of the nastiest in the world sometimes. Any religious person can be that. But in the last two, three years, something has happened and is still happening and have a long ways to go. God seems to be showing me the heart, not really the heart of people, but to look at each person, even in this room, as God sees them. Loved. Accepted completely forgiven <laughs> in his care, being held together by Christ, whether they believe it or not. And I, I, I'm loving people more, even unbelievers. I can, wow. They may not agree with me in everything. I don't agree with other people and everything, but we can still love. We can still have a relationship. We can still have a coffee. That's Jesus, love for other Christians. It starts here, practice here. <coughs> then he says, I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Pause. He says, I pray for you constantly. I bet you some of you go through a whole week and Never give a person at Hope Fellowship a single thought. It's possible. It's easy to do. You can't count relatives, okay? Some of you have a lot of relatives here. <laughs> but Paul, seeing as Christ showed him to see, because God gave him that vision, caused him to want to pray for people. I'm learning a new way to pray. And that is letting God prompted me to prayer. I do a lot of Eldon prayers. <laughs> For Eldon, bless him. Just one sentence. He taught us well. The simplicity. For Ralph, bless him, help him. That's increasing rapidly. I get a phone call from somebody. I'm going to pray for them too. They don't even know it. It's weird. Do you know what that is? Holy Spirit, who lives in you, connecting with you. It's your union having an impact. 
starting to affect your mind. Paul is a great example. I pray for you constantly, he says. You don't have that desire today? No problem. God's got to give you that desire. It's okay. You can't muster it up. If you have this weird thing inside right now that says, but I want that. Awesome. That's the Holy Spirit. Let him take care of the journey for you. This is Paul writing. And here what he, here's what he does. I pray for you constantly. I love this next line. I never saw it like this before. I pray asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father. Remember the last six weeks, eight weeks, we've been talking about Father. Paul is killing a myth. And you're going to see a lot more as you look through the Gospels and through the epistles. He is bringing to Revelation a picture of Father the way it should be. Glorious. Glorious Father. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen to this, to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Two different things. Wisdom is not understanding. Understanding is not wisdom. They're different. Sometimes wisdom comes with maturity too. Great insight. Understanding, I have seen, happens when you're reading along, suddenly you have an insight into a, a passage or a, a thing, and suddenly you get, what? I never saw that before. Where'd that come from? That's understanding it. How many of you can explain everything you understand? Can't. There's a lot of stuff I've been learning over the last 10, 15 years. Much I've been able to ex explain. But there's even more now I can't explain, but I know. Or I believe. I can't explain it, but I understand. It's neat. I want to share constantly with you what I do learn, because it's exciting. And when you do learn, you want to share. That's why I encourage you guys, especially this fall, folks, consider joining a small group. Just think about it. It's a place to share, not a place to go and study and learn and then do your prayer and leave. If it's a routine, don't bother showing up. But if you want to connect with other saints, you want to start to wrestle with Scripture in a fun way. Keep it light. Unless the Holy Spirit takes it and does even more. But that's great. Consider a greater connection with one another. Paul is encouraging that to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may what? Grow in your knowledge of who? God. Your knowledge of God. Why is that important? Because the more you grow in your knowledge of God the Father, the more you're going to respond and love those around you. Many people have a false understanding of Father. He's not the mean old ogre. He's not the angry judge ready to nail you. He's not the ticked off, begrudged cop ready to shoot the foot off your, the toe off your foot if you cross the line. He's, he's not that God. That God doesn't exist. Does God get angry? Yes. Do we fully understand what wrath and anger mean? No. But I begin with God as love. From there, I now can explore. It's important you start with the right foundation. I start with Jesus, who came to reveal the Father. So you may grow in your knowledge of God I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the wonderful future he has promised to those he's called. <gasps> there it is. Holy smokes, did you see that? It's there. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Our hearts have darkness in them. It sounds weird to say, and I'll be careful to explain it. It's the unbelief that we have. That is darkness. That's it. Unbelief. Lack of knowledge. Lack of understanding. 
as the Holy Spirit shines his light in, it dissipates, gone. It's like, whoosh, as if it wasn't there. He does that. I don't have full understanding in everything, and neither do you. So let's not prounce around as if we think we have a full understanding on a certain category. We don't. More humility is needed in conversations. I need to learn that too. I'm on a journey. I'm growing up. I hate growing up. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the wonderful future he's promised to those he's called. Let me suggest this. What's your future? I, I don't know what your actual future will be. But I know who's with you. I know who is already in your future. It is Jesus. He's already walked the path with you. He's already lived your life as you. You can trust him to circumstantially walk through the experience of your current life. Your future is rooted in him. You need not fear. When fear comes in, it reveals often, when we're fearing of the future, often we're afraid and don't trust God for all those details. Now, is there room to be afraid when crisis hits? <laughs> yeah, it's natural. That's not the fear we're talking about. The fear is a displacement of faith, lack of faith. Trust your Heavenly Father who is already in your future. He's got your back. No matter how terribly life can, can uh, uh, take turns, Ralph did not expect to be in the hospital. That was not on his calendar. Okay? But his Heavenly Father's with him. He's with him on the bike. He's with him in the hospital. When he got the staples out, his father was in him. He was... His father was never absent. There's great security in that. This is how we grow up. We can find God in every single one of these little details. Every one of them. You want a good dream and a good future? He is your dream. I want you to realize what a rich and glorious inheritance he has given to his people. That's what he wants for you. He wants you to know your glorious inheritance. In Colossians, he talked about this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have everything you need for living a godly life. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. This one's exciting. When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan... I fall to my knees and pray to the Father. Has that happened to you yet? Has God wowed you yet? Or are you running through a mall glancing at pictures? When we realize the depth of what he has done, we can't help it. He says, when I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan. Take a look at your own life for just a minute. How did you end up here this morning? Would you have planned this 10 years ago? No. What were the circumstances that brought you to where you are today in your faith? Was there a crisis? Are there people? Was there a book? What? what? There's a whole bunch of things that could contribute to your direction. Who was in charge of that plan? How big is that scope? It's big. Can you stop and just thank God? Can you take one of your prayer times and do no requests? <laughs> just thank, ponder, so that it, it, what it does here, he says, drove him to pray, meaning respond. Oh, by the way, you and I were created as responders, right? That's how God created us, to respond. You're not initiators. He's the initiator. He's given you so many initiating elements and people in your life to raise your chin from looking down at your circumstances to back up to him. You gonna let him? Or you can do this. I 
I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Paul is praying this for others. There are people here this morning that need to experience inner strength because inside they're just ripped open. There's pain going on. It ain't pretty. I remember reading this little booklet growing up and said, this was your life. Anybody remember that little booklet? The idea was that when you die, you're going to go to heaven to this place and there's going to be this huge Megatron screen. And everybody's whole life is played out. So really, most of eternity is watching movies. <laughs> and, and the idea of the booklet was to guilt you so badly into a prayer because you don't want all your crap showing on the screen for all of humanity to watch. You know, and I thought, no. That's all a guilt-driven little booklet. Fear-based there will be no movie like that in heaven. Because the focus of that little booklet was on all the bad things you've done. And I'm here to declare today, Jesus took all those bad things that you have done and are still going to do, has removed them through the cross, has paid for them. Will you experience consequences from stupid choices? Yes. But he has taken care of them. They are paid for and forgiven. Sin will punish you now, not God. Not God. He has forgiven you. And I promise the more you believe that, you get to trust his heart, you'll understand his wisdom, and oh my goodness, love will keep flowing. It, it is an unbelievable chain reaction. The depth of the wisdom, the inner strength that he wants to give you and I. And he actually has. You just need to experience it and utilize it. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. Not just his love, his marvelous love. Is Paul giving God a really good promo? Yes. Why? Because the Jewish culture saw God as always angry and oh, so tippy. Just one wrong, oh, that's it. I've had it with you. <laughs> that was the whole culture. And that lie still takes over in our Western culture. He's trying to point out the real God, the real love, the marvelous love of God. Is Christ at home in your heart? Or is it a little bit uncomfortable? Is he the religious Jesus <laughs> who doesn't exist? Or is he the life-giving lover Jesus who wants to know you intimately? Who wants to fellowship with you in your spirit? From spirit to spirit we pray. You don't have to do this. I recently learned that unfortunately, this whole bowing thing, now there's value to bowing and closing your eyes because it helps you focus and concentrate. However, the reason bowing came into place is usually a shame-based approach. Closing your eyes, never look in the eyes. Shame. I get it now. Will I still bow my head? Yes. <laughs> but I won't do it with a subliminal shame message that I'm not worthy, God. You are worthy. You've been created worthy. You were made worthy at the cross. Lift your head up. Look in his eyes. When you pray, pray any way you want. There are no rules at all. We have little systems in place to make us feel good. I was at a funeral this week and um, a musician played an amazing piece of guitar music. I thought, wow, that was amazing. And everybody sat there. 
you guys kidding? I stood up and said, you guys can clap. There are no rules. And boom, the place went up and, and this is a funeral. And the place went up in, in, uh, in celebration. There are no rules. We're called to celebrate the life within us. And Paul gives us tremendous encouragement. And listen to this. May your roots go down deep into the soul of God's marvelous, soil of God's marvelous love. Why? Because where do roots get their nourishment from? From underneath the soil, wherever they are. Whatever's there goes back up in. You are rooted in his love. Now let your roots of your soul drink from agape. Pure agape is not afraid. <laughs> and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should. Here's the should. How long? How high? How deep? His love really is. So, you should know, that's what he's saying, you should know how deep, how wide, so that you can do this next part. May you experience then the love of Christ, though it is so great, you will never fully understand it. There is no arrival. And I don't think he's talking about this side of heaven either. I think we're going to be discovering the glory of God's love forever. You can't even fathom. Let's try fathoming for a minute, okay? Just try fathoming how deep and how wide. Okay, go further than that now. No, further. You can't! It's bigger and better than you ever dreamed of. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great, you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I encourage you to look up the word filled. I believe it's connected to the idea of Surrendering and action. Be controlled by, I think is the right word. You'll be controlled by the love of God. That's a lot. His love's good. I think what we might do is walk through Ephesians uh, right from the start. There's so much in here. And I didn't, I'm only halfway through what I want to talk about today. So we're, we're done. His love isn't. What's he telling you today? What's he trying to affirm in you today? Do you have thoughts of you're no good? You lack something? If people really knew me, they just wouldn't like me? Thoughts? Your Heavenly Father really knows you. He's crazy about you. And the more you grow in grace, the more his love and your love, your, your roots are rooted in his love, you're going to start to love other people regardless of what you discover about them. See, that's just flesh. You got flesh, I got flesh, we all got flesh. Flesh isn't who you are. It's just how you function when you're not abiding in the Holy Spirit. That's it. May you grow to know his love more and more. His love will reveal your father. Your father's revelation will lead to loving others. It may start with loving yourself first. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if your word says we'll never fully understand it, um, you're blowing my mind already. I guess you didn't create us with the capacity to know it all. <laughs> so thank you for the revelation you have given. Teach me to slow down, focus 
on what you want me to see, not only in people, but in your word. Allow my heart to love with your love. So it's always genuine, authentic, and free-flowing. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.